Tonight, from Hollywood, The Barbara Stanwyck Show. Good evening. Tonight, your gas company playhouse presents one of the most startling stories of this series. A melodrama of suspense about a hired assassin. What makes it startling is the way the melodrama turns into comedy. Guest stars Leon Ames and Peter Falk join me in the teleplay by A.I. Bezerides from a story by Larry Resner. David Lowell Rich directed it. And now in just 60 seconds, the first act of Assassin. finished it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come in, come in. Sit down, please. Yes, sir. How long have you been with uh, Monson and Carlisle, Miss Forrest? On June 21st next, 13 years exactly. Fred, uh, Mr. Monson hired you. Yes, you wanted somebody more spectacular, but Mr. Munson felt that efficiency was more important. Well, I must say you were efficient. Thank you. And spectacular, too, but hardly in the way I would have predicted. I beg your pardon? You should beg my pardon, Miss Forrest. Mr. Monson's death made it necessary for me to go through the books. He trusted you implicitly, did he not? Oh, yes, indeed he did. In 13 years of loyal and dedicated service, how much money would you say you embezzled? It's all here in black and white. Oh, my goodness. Twenty-two thousand. Oh, that is a lot of money, isn't it? Yes, it is. Oh, yes, when you add it all up. But, of course, if you take it year by year, it... You do admit you took it. Oh, yes, indeed, I do. And I'm certain it was with great pangs of pain you betrayed our trust in you. Well, at first, my conscience was a little troubled. But the deeper I went, the less troubled I was. And <laughs> I guess there's even a threshold to a conscience. <clears throat> well, aren't you going to call the police? Certainly not. Oh. Do you realize what would happen if I had you arrested? Reporters, headlines, publicity, the damage to our reputation would be incalculable. No, Miss Forrest. My one concern is to get back the money. Twenty-two thousand back? Well, I couldn't possibly pay it back. Oh, yes, you can. I can? How? I know, I know. You'll deduct it from my salary, say, twenty dollars a week. Miss Forrest, at the rate of twenty dollars a week, do you realize how many weeks it would take to pay back twenty-two thousand dollars? One thousand one hundred and thirty-five weeks. <laughs> no, I have a better way. Your assets. Purchase, no doubt, with the funds of your employers. But, Mr. Carlyle, not one cent did I Please. spend on myself. Now, you have a cabin in the mountains. You have a you car. You mean sell my cabin? That's precisely what I mean at once. Oh. Now, I want you to take the day off. Go up there and take but care of it. what now. will I tell my friends? You see, I lend it to my friends. Well, you know, all those poor people course. who don't have the same advantages that I have. Of course, I spend no. an occasional weekend. I spend my two-week vacation. There. No, no, I couldn't possibly sell my cabin. But you will sell your cabin for what you can get for it. And you will sell your car, and you will cash in your insurance. Now, Mr. Munson planned that insurance for me as security for my old age. Do you think I should have concern for your security when you have none for mine? And what about Fred Munson's widow and children? No, I repeat emphatically and finally, I want the company's money. Every penny of it. Or you will go to jail. Do you understand, Miss Forrest? Yes, sir. Hello, Mr. Glintz. Did you find a buyer? Not a one. But last summer you said you were getting inquiries all the time. You know, I've just been knuckling my brain to figure out to try to help you. And about the only thing I can come up with is, seeing as how that you bought the property from me in the first place, to take it off your hand myself. Oh, would you? 
Well, now, it's the least I can do. Oh. I don't want to see you suffer no loss. Now, how much did I sell it to you for? Uh, for... $5,000, wasn't it? Well, I'm ready to take it back for just that. $5,000 and not a cent less. But when I bought it, you said it would double in value in one year. And I've owned it seven years. But it did double the first year, ma'am. But now it's right back to where it started. But, Mr. Glenn's, I must sell. I must. That's my offer. Call me if you decide to sell, because I might change my mind. Well, good day, ma'am. Uh, you were going to jump? I, I thought somebody could use my shoes. They've only been resold once, and that cardigan is practically new. Yeah, that's a very nice thought. Uh, but now you're all set, right? I mean, you're ready to jump, so jump. No, I changed my mind. I'm certainly not going to jump with everybody looking on. Anyhow, this... This sort of thing should be done in private. You know, you're absolutely right, and I apologize for butting in. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll turn my back. I'll even close my eyes. You mean you want me to jump? Why? Look, lady, will you jump already? Now jump. You either jump or I push you off, one or the other. Oh! Now... <laughs> hey, what's the matter? Let go of me! What are you, a lunatic? I'll give you a rap right in your head. Nylon stockings. Stockings were too tight to stop my circulation. Well, you were intent on stopping my circulation altogether. Yeah, that's right, lady. But I goofed. Why? Why did you want to kill me? Who wanted to? Listen, I don't care whether you're alive or dead, but uh, somebody wanted you knocked off, and I was hired to pull a plug. You mean you were engaged, like somebody calling in a plumber? That's right, I was engaged. And, hey, lady, my hands are getting numb. But who? Who engaged you? I don't know who. Well, somebody wants me dead now. Who? Look, lady, I don't know. Now, look, you got a gun in your hand. Put a bullet in my head. Get it over with. Now, that's somebody better being wants me dead. I want to know who. Look, will you leave me alone about that yet, please? No! Stop! Stop! Get out of here! But you were about to fall off the cliff. Oh. 
thanks. Yeah. Thanks, lady. I'm getting a draft on my head. Hey, thanks. I want you to believe me when I tell you that the uh, Pentagon of Washington are missing a big bet. I know, they got the tanks and the guns and the cannons and they got the jets and, uh, and the bombs and they got the monkeys flying around all over the place, but uh, they're still missing a big bet. Because what they need, they need an army full of dames and they got to fill their backpacks full of stockings and they got to turn them loose on the world. And believe me, by 3 o'clock Friday afternoon, I got all Russia tied up in a knot. What's the matter now? What are you crying for? Well, wouldn't you cry if somebody wanted you dead? For me? I don't want people to hate me. I want them to love me. I... What's your name? Joe. Joe, who what? Who hired you? I don't know who hired me. You know, the uh, client goes to the agent, the agent goes to another agent, then it goes down the line until it gets to me. Uh, and the guy gives me the message, I pull the trigger, that's all. That must have cost an awful lot of money. Well, different jobs, you got different price. How much were you paid for me? Well, this wasn't a big job. Well, how much? I got 500 and uh, I got expenses. Oh, that's all my life was worth $500. <laughs> I know it's more than that. Somebody ought to give something to the middleman, too. Yes, but you, you were only paying 500. Well, look, I gotta take them as they come because, you know, uh, you know, my lot of work, you can't advertise in a newspaper for the job. Well, it's very lucky. Not for me, but for you. What do you mean by that? Now you won't have my death on your conscience. Well, you got to be kidding. How many people have you killed? More than one? Five? Ten? Twenty? More than twenty? And... And you, you, your conscience doesn't trouble you? You don't see their faces, you don't hear their screams? What screams? Listen, lady, when I hit, I gotta hit fast. I gotta hit clean. Who's got time to remember faces? Well, didn't you have the smallest twinge, not even at first? Yeah, well, maybe in the beginning, yeah, like the first uh, two or three. Mm. I know. It was the same way with me. Well, what'd you do? I stole some money. Joe, why didn't you shoot me from where you were standing over there? Well, of course, I wouldn't get any powder burns from that distance. You see, if I used the gun, I had to make it look like it was you that did it. Like a suicide. Oh, oh, I see. But who? Who would pay to have me killed? Hey, lady, listen to me. I got an idea. Look, you're all wrapped up in this, right? I mean, we're both in a bind together. Now, if I could figure it out for you, you'd let me go, right? Well, do you think you could? Oh, sure, I could figure it out. All you gotta do is fill me in on the details, that's all. Now, we'll start with, uh, who did you steal this money from? Well, the firm I work for, I'm an embezzler. An embezzler, I see. Uh, well, how much, uh, how much did you embezzle? A hundred dollars? A thousand? Five thousand? Ten thousand? Twenty thousand dollars? Well, roughly. No kidding, eh? Well, now, let's see now, uh... Well, this firm, uh, how much of a pinch was that for them? I mean, did it hurt them bad? Oh, no, not really. You see, I'm bonded. They're covered by insurance. But Mr. Carlyle felt that if news of my defalcations were to be published in the newspaper, why, it would ruin the firm's reputation. Well, tell me this now. Uh, how did you get caught? Well, Mr. Monson, he's the senior partner. He died. And Mr. Carlyle was going over the books before the auditors would come in next week to settle Mr. Monson's estate. Well, what kind of guy is this guy, Carlisle? Tell me about him. Oh, he's a fine gentleman. Of course, he's... He's quite angry with me. Angry enough? Hmm? You mean... 
angry enough to want me killed? Oh, no. 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 I mean, it's not possible that uh, Carlisle also had his hand in the till. And then when Munson dies, uh, Carlisle figures the orders are coming in and they're going to catch me. So uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll hang it all on a girl. Oh, no. No. No, he wouldn't. No, he... He... Couldn't. But if I were to commit suicide, it would look as if I had taken it all, wouldn't it? Oh, Mr. Carla. Oh, my. Oh, thank you, Joe. Hey, wait a minute. Look, you said if I figured out, you're going to let me go. No, you said that. Look, you're not going to go back on your word. Well, we're not sure he has his hand in the till, are we? But we got a deal. Well, I won't know until I go back and check the books. Hey, come back here! Hey, God, come back here! Think, Louise. Think like Mr. Carla. Think big. Exactly, have you been up to? Well, I might ask the same question of you, Mr. Carlyle. Just exactly what have you been up to? I? Oh, come, come, as one crook to another. Surely you're not going to deny your guilt. Are you out of your mind? You've sold stock belonging to clients. Now, I don't have the exact amount because the value of stock varies from day to day. But using yesterday's closing quotations, I would say that you have embezzled at least $250,000. Oh, I've got to hand it to you, Mr. Carlyle. If they were giving medals for this sort of thing, you surely deserve one. Now, I've heard just about enough of your fantasies. I've invested my life in Monson and Carlyle. My whole life. Why would I embezzle for my own company? I don't know, but I can tell you how you got away with it. You paid the dividends out of your own pocket so the clients did not know their shares had been stolen. You are overwrought. Not Mr. today. Yesterday, I almost committed suicide, and that's what you hoped for, wasn't it? Then all my little thefts and your big thefts would have been lumped together, and I would have gotten the blame for the whole thing. So now, what are you going to do, Mr. Carlyle? I am going to have a drink. Would you like a drink, Miss Forrest? No, thank you. Now, there's every reason in the world for what I did, but a man like you, why would you embezzle $250,000? There's a lady in New York. You mean you spent $250,000 on a lady? She's a very expensive lady. Oh, my, she must be. I was a fool. I should have married years ago a steady, decent, intelligent woman. Someone like you. Oh, thank you. Will you marry me, Miss Forrest? I marry you? Yes, now, today. A wife cannot be made to testify against her husband or a husband against his wife. But, Mr. Carlyle... Uh, uh, Damon. Uh, Damon. I don't know what to say. I've never thought about you in this way. Well, what about the lady in New York? I'll never see her again, my word of honor. We can make a go of it, Lois. I know we can. Louise. Louise, we'll have a good life. Neither of us has ever been married. We can buy a nice house. I already have a boat. Do you like boats? Oh, dear, no, I'm a very Well, bad we'll sell a boat. Say yes, Louise. Well, what about the embezzlement? Mr. Munson's estate. Munson, that Judas. Remember how he used to come in with that big smile? Good morning, everybody. But behind that front, do you know what he was up to? Women. Gambling, high Mr. Living. Munson, I don't believe it. Well, neither do I, but that's unimportant. Don't you see? Neither of us will have to take the blame. Let Munson take it. 
But his wife, his children. Oh, those spoiled brats. We'd be doing them a favor. Now, poverty and adversity build character. You've worked all your life, haven't you? Ever since high school. Now there. See what a fine woman it's made out of you? Maybe we can help those Monson kids grow up into real human beings. <coughs> Who's there? You know, I caught some cold sitting up there on that mountain. Took me five hours to get out of these things here. Who are you? Oh, but I was right about this monkey, right? He was the guy, huh? Yes. Who is he? The man you hired to kill me. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, not here. Uh, not in my office. In fact, not anywhere. No? No, it's uh, no longer necessary. Uh, the, I, I uh, wasn't thinking straight, Louise. I didn't know what I was doing. I was in a panic. Uh, we figured out a better way. We don't have to resort to such drastic measures. You're gonna hang this whole thing on the, on the Munson guy, right? Exactly. He won't mind. He's dead. Louise and I'll fix the books. Isn't that right, Louise? Uh, won't we, Louise? I've been thinking. Mr. Munson was always so nice to me. And the children, well, they may be a little spoiled, but they're nice boys. You know, I want to tell you something. You know, you two, you make me sick. You're the worst pair of crooks I've ever seen. I am not a crook. What are you talking about? For ten years, you got both hands in it till you're stealing, grabbing like there's no tomorrow, and now you're looking to be respectable. Now stand over there, you monkey. And you... You're some dummy, you are. Here's a man, he's offing your way out of the pocket that you're in, and you're chickening out. Well, it's the boys, Joe. I just can't have them on my conscience. Oh, you're starting in again with that conscience, eh? Hey, hey that's what's bothering you, too, right? Naturally. Oh, so you could hire it done, or you don't want to see it done. But all right, all right. You don't, you don't want to see it I done? I changed my mind. Young man, I tell you, the killing no longer fits into my plans. Yeah, but you don't understand. I got a contract with the syndicate. This is an obligation. I'll pay you. How much do you want? Just name a price. Price? What do you think? Money could buy everything? Well, it can't buy me. Because I'm not for sale. Now, stand over there. Because I got a job to do. Now, look, lady. I don't want you to be scared. Just take it easy, keep calm, because with this cannon, you'll never know what hits you. Oh, please, don't kill her, please. Something wrong? The bullets. Somebody pulled the bullets. Oh, you mean these? Yeah. I removed them when you were unconscious on the cliff. I didn't want you to hurt anybody. Mr. Carlisle, would you please call the police? Just dial O and tell the operator. 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 Must I be manacled to this fellow? He's an assassin. Now, what's the matter with you? You know, I ought to have my head examined. I get mixed up with these amateurs. All right, Jimmy, take him downtown. Poor Mr. Carla. Poor Joe. You know, you're not in such a hot spot yourself. $22,000. What'd you do with all that money? Well, the first 600 went for a friend of mine who needed an operation, but she got well. And then there was another friend badly in need of a winter wardrobe. Now you know you just can't let your friends freeze. And the next 3,000, well, that put my sister's boy through college. He made five beta kappa. And nothing for yourself? Not one penny did I spend on myself. It all went for my friend. Oh, dear, I, I shall miss them very much. Yeah, and they'll miss you. Well, but you'll make a lot of new friends while you're serving your sentence. Well, that's right, I will, won't I? Yeah. Why, they could be the best years of my life, couldn't they? Shall we go, officer? <laughs>